Hello there and welcome back to the Chaps Guide, the channel where we talk about men's style, grooming and of course self-development. And today it's my magnificent seven style tips that will keep you looking sharp in everything that you do. Now I'm always looking for reliable tips and ideas that can help me look my best for as little money as possible at any given time. And over my journey through life, which has been several decades now unfortunately, I've picked up many pieces of advice and little snippets and ideas that can help you look better as they've helped me over the years. So here they come. Now the first tip is to build your wardrobe around a number of classically stylish core foundation items. And what I mean by that is a lot of people get sucked into this process of buying uh, fashionable clothes every year and then to be honest they last a season uh, not necessarily because of their construction but because they drop out of fashion and people then have to buy something else uh, to replace them. Well that doesn't happen if you stick to sartorial rules of elegance and you just reserve your spending to those classic items which never go out of style. Just remember style is permanent fashion and the sort of things I'm talking about. So if you're a classically stylish chap you'll be thinking about quite often wearing say for instance a charcoal grey suit. If you buy yourself a good quality single breasted charcoal grey suit it'll never go out of style. Uh, regardless of what happens in the fashion industry, that item will always be appropriate. The same as a good quality woolen overcoat. Whatever happens in the winter, a good quality woolen overcoat, if you invest money in it, will last you, well, potentially decades and decades, and it may even pass on to your children if you invest wisely. When it comes to shoes, the black cap to Oxford, well, that'll have you covered for almost every situation. So you just need to think about those items. Today I'm wearing the traditional navy blue blazer. It's been a stylish addition to a gentleman's outfit for many, many generations, and it will do so into the future. So it's worth investing your money in those foundation items that'll never go out of style. Now my second tip relates very much to that first one. Once you've purchased those core foundation items, then you rotate your other accessories and items around those core items to make it appear as if you've got many more um, ensembles of clothing than you actually do. So if you wear a different shirt, a different tie, a scarf, things like that, it'll make those things look all the more fresh every time you wear them and actually even though you might only own one charcoal grey suit, if you change different shirts, wear a different pocket square, place lapel pins on it, um, wear a cravat from time to time, a bow tie even, all of these different accessories are totally different looks and in fact the people who you meet and interact with won't even notice that those foundation items remain the same because the eye is naturally drawn to those colourful accessories and that's the way to make that wardrobe interchangeable and look much larger than it really is. Now my third tip relates to the shoes. The shoes that you wear are actually quite capable of totally killing or enhancing the clothing that you're wearing if you're wearing a pair of shoes or boots that are inappropriate for the situation that you find yourself in. Now by and large if you own a good pair of black cap toe oxfords you'll have got almost any formal situation that you're likely to encounter fully covered. Whether it's a wedding, a court appearance, a funeral, it's covered by the black cap to Oxford. However, it isn't the one shoe does all shoe because it's no good when it comes to informal events. You know, they, look, they don't look very good with jeans. I absolutely would not recommend wearing them with denim. Uh, and they don't look great with chino shoes either. The black of the shoe makes it quite stark and it is, after all, you know, possibly the most formal of all shoes, the black cap to Oxford. So you need to be thoughtful about the shoes that you wear to the situation that you're going to. Now a pair of, um, let's think, it's a, a pair of desert boots, suede desert boots, chucker boots, they are pretty versatile when it comes to uh, your informal wear. You can wear them with denim, you can wear them with chinos, in a host of different situations. 
but they're absolutely useless when it comes to any form of formality. And woe betide the gentleman who tries to wear them as formal footwear. You really stand out as somebody who has poor taste and isn't aware of good dressing standards. So think about those shoes. You only need to own a couple of pairs. In fact, you know, the black cap to Oxford and say a desert boot has you covered for most informal and most formal situations. So just be thoughtful of the shoes that you're wearing and how they'll be perceived by those that you meet. Now my fourth tip is get the brake right. And by that, I mean the brake in your trousers. And for the uninitiated, the brake is that point where your shoe, the little crease, where your shoe meets your trouser and the trouser just puckers up a little and that's what we call the brake. And this can actually namesake, make or break the clothing that you're wearing. Now in recent years there's been, for me, this trend of people having the break of their trousers, or actually the hem of their trousers, far too high, wearing their trousers very short and even showing ankle or flesh between the shoe and the trouser. For me, that is a very unattractive attribute to a man's clothing. Uh, it shows that you, you've either bought the wrong size trousers, which is for me, what springs to my mind, first of all, uh, and although some would say it's quite fashionable, for me, it just doesn't look like that. It doesn't look like you're wearing trousers that fit you. So get the brake right. It should just nestle on top of the instep of your shoe where the laces are, and it should be just right. Maybe so that as you walk along, it pulls up ever so slightly, but certainly not showing any sock or any of your ankle when you're in a stood relaxed situation. So get that break right, because if you get it wrong and it's too short, it has the impression of actually making you look, you know, very untasteful in the way that you've dressed and possibly a bit too short or too tall in your stature. Uh, so just think about getting that break right and you look great in any trousers that you wear. Now I hope you're enjoying this video of my magnificent seven style secrets so far. If you are, please give me a thumbs up and think about subscribing to the channel. It helps our channel grow and it's great to have you on board. Now my fifth tip follows very close on the heels of that getting the break right on your trousers and that's get a tailor who can be your ally when it comes to your wardrobe. Because after all, Whatever is said and done when it comes to style and fashion, fit is king. If you have a £1,000 suit and it doesn't fit you very well, it's not going to look as good as a £100 suit which fits you closely to your body and accentuates your positive features. So it's not about the amount of money that you spend in your clothes, it's quite often more about the money you invest in tailoring. Now in a town or a city, wherever you live, there are bound to be many uh, seamstresses or seamsters who are able to assist you in getting that fit just right. Even if you buy inexpensive clothes that are you know, very modestly priced, it's worth investing a fair bit of money in getting them tailored to fit you correctly. Because as I say, poorly fitting clothes are as good as, well, not buying any as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's well worth seeking out those tailors. It's amazing what they can do to your clothes. They're also good at making repairs. So if you have any damaged clothes, they can you know, do invisible repairs on rips and tears. They can replace items that have become worn out, like, uh, like your zip. Uh, so it's well worth finding a tailor who can go forward with you in your sartorial future and make sure you look pin sharp in whatever you wear, in however much money you've spent on it, going into the future. And don't forget, the tailor isn't just for your suits and blazers, it can be for your casual attire as well. So when you spend a fair bit of money these days, if you are inclined to do so, on expensive denim uh, or even chino trousers or casual shirts, don't forget that the tailor can make those look pin sharp for you as well. So it's not just for the suits and formals, it's for the informals too, if you're to look your best in any situation. My tip number six is to learn how to look after and maintain your kit. That way, the clothes that you've invested so much money in will last longer and look better when they're in your possession. Now, it's not a difficult thing either, and it will be with you for the rest of your life if you learn how to iron well. Now for me, I mean I learned to iron when I was 17. I joined the military and I can honestly say right up to this point, I'm 50 years of age, I have never had 
my shirt ironed for me by anybody else. I've been married, my wife has never ironed a shirt of mine. That's because I take pride in the ironing of my shirts because they look great when I've done it the way I like and I enjoy doing it because I've cultivated a style of doing it over many years. Look on YouTube if it's uncommon for you to iron your own shirts or if your mum has ironed your shirts for you up to this point, but learn how to iron a shirt because they will look better, look more cared for and show that you're a person of taste if you iron well. Similarly, when it comes to the laundering of your clothes, learn how to interpret those symbols which are on the care labels of your clothing. Because if you wash something like a woolen blazer inappropriately, it might end the life of that blazer. So learn how to understand how to wash things, things that should go in the, the tumble dryer, things that can't go in the washing machine, things that need to be dry cleaned. They last so much longer and look so much better if you do that. Similarly, you know, if a button starts to feel loose, learn how to sew it back on. There are umpteen videos here on YouTube showing you to iron, how to sew a button on, and all of the other skills which come into being when it comes to looking after your clothes. And it are skills that you will not lose, they'll always be there, and they will help you maintain your wardrobe for the rest of your life. Now on that subject of dry cleaning, it's important for us to also remember that you don't have to dry clean your clothes every week, every fortnight, every month. If you imagine your suit has only got, say, let's say 25 dry cleaning cycles of life contained within its construction. If you rattle through those 25 dry cleanings very close together, your suit will fall apart, it'll deteriorate, it won't look so good, you won't wear it, your money would have been burned up very quickly. However, if you spread those 25 dry cleaning cycles out over even years and years, you'll get far much more return for your money that you've invested in that suit. And to be honest, you don't have to dry clean your suits all the time or even like a woolen blazer like I'm wearing now. I only have this garment dry cleaned maybe twice a year when it, I think it's needed to freshen it up or if there's a mark or a stain on it. The rest of the time, I look after it myself. I brush it with a clothes brush regularly and if there's any marks or stains on it, I'll try and remove that myself with a damp cloth in the first instance without automatically taking it to the dry cleaner where, as I say, each time it goes through the dry cleaning machine, it takes away a little bit of the life of this jacket. The colour will be leached away and the construction, the panels will get that little bit looser, a little bit less perfect. So dry clean only when necessary and learn how to look after those clothes yourself in the meantime. Now my tip number seven of my magnificent seven style secrets shouldn't come as any secret to any chap and that's the devil is in the detail and I've made videos about this in the past and I speak about it regularly. We live in a time where more and more men dress in almost a corporate uniform. They wear a navy blue suit with a, um, with a blue shirt or a charcoal suit with a white shirt and if you walk down the streets of London or any of the major cities in this country or any country around the world you know eight out of ten men who pass you will be wearing some derivative of that corporate uniform so it's those small little details that make all the difference the pocket square that you wear the tie that you wear the lapel badge the cravat that you occasionally wear, the bow tie, if you're so inclined to wear a bow tie. So think about those details that add that little snap to your clothing and you will stand out from the crowd and look your very best. Well, we've reached the end of our magnificent seven style secrets, but to thank you for staying tuned this long, I'd like to throw in a bonus. And for me, that's gonna be Choose an icon that you respect, somebody either in the modern era or the, the golden era, the classic era of men's dressing in the 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever, and have a look at them. Look them up on Pinterest, look them up on Google, and see the way that they dress. What has drawn you to liking them as a style icon? and see what little things that they've, that they've brought into their wardrobe. Look at the details. Now, you might not have noticed in the past. You might just think that you've been attracted to the way that they dress without actually dissecting that to, to think why it became something which drew your eye on. 
So look at those icons, see what they've done, which makes you drawn to them. Now for me, um, I've always been very much attracted to the stylings of the 1960s, 1950s, 60s, often called the, the golden era of men's style. And if there was one particular icon that I could narrow it down to, I would say it would probably be Sean Connery in the early days of the James Bond film franchise. Um, I really like those well-cut, uh, stylish, single-breasted suits with very simple, solid coloured shirts, white shirts, with quite thin ties in many cases. It's extremely classic. It never goes out of fashion. It's, it's just as stylish today as it was in the 1950s, 1960s. So for me, that's the way. I don't say I emulate Sean Connery because, you know, he was six foot two and a totally different shape to me. I'm five foot ten and of different stature. So I can never look like him, but I look at the attributes that he incorporated into his wardrobe and I try and emulate that in mine. It's a simple way that you can perhaps grasp some of that, that zeitgeist, that those icons that you find, uh, you know, stylistically important and try and incorporate that yourself. So there we go. That was the end of the bonus. I hope you've enjoyed this video today on my magnificent seven style secrets. Not really secrets, just ideas and little reminders that can keep you on top of your sartorial game. If you have enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and I look forward to sharing more secrets, ideas, and tips with you in the future. And if you have any ideas and secrets that you think I could benefit from, please leave them in the comment section below. And until the next time we meet, I wish you well. I hope you good health for yourself and your family, and I will see you again very soon.